hi and welcome on in this is let's in design my name is Annika and I'm your host today and this is Adobe live welcome back to another amazing stream here on Adobe live we are live here right here was the subscribe button so if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe to us at bit.ly slash Adobe live YouTube right over here we have so many amazing design tutorials we have illustration streams and a ton of, a ton of fun um, I fumble saying that, but I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, we have fun here. Um, thanks so much for being here in chat with me. We have a live chat both on YouTube and on Behance. We have a worldwide community here. I really, really appreciate you all joining. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you all joining here. Let me quickly take a peek at the chat and see um, who's in the chat and say hello. We have Susan in the chat. We have Stuart, Uriel, Caroline, um, Sin, Cody. Oliver, Kevin, um, I love it. All the friends in the chat. I really appreciate you all being here. Thanks so much for spending your hour with me. I will be here streaming for the next one hour. Let me know where you are tuning in from. Um, just as a reminder, we always try to make our streams accessible. So if you are having any difficulties um, understanding what shortcuts I'm using, I do have um, shortcuts on the screen. So you will be able to see all of that. And in case you have um, an, a difficulty understanding anything I'm saying, make sure to put them in the chat. I will be able to address your questions, um, both on YouTube and on Behance. Without further ado, I do also want to mention that we have a new call to action. If you do create anything, I know Penny Doodles in chat always create something for whatever she's learned during Let's InDesign streams. So make sure to share your work with us on Instagram, Twitter, wherever you think you post your social media stuff. You can share your work, tag me and Adobe Live and tag Let's InDesign and hashtag Adobe Live. That's going to help us identify what you are sharing. Make sure to tag us. I will be continuing this in the next quarter as well. So that's some really exciting stuff coming your way. But for me to be able to share your entries, make sure to tag us on social media. I'm sure um, our moderator Cody can drop those hashtags and the usernames in chat. And make sure to follow those usernames as well. Hey, um, I love it. Biola also says, let's do this. So I've had a lot of fun um, creating all of these fun projects using Let's InDesign and InDesign. Um, so I'm going to review some of those features that we covered in the previous streams. We had about 10 episodes. This is a project on my Behance profile where you can go in, browse the video embeds, click on the play button and watch the replays on demand anytime you want. So we have, we created an e-catalog. We created an interactive magazine, which was really fun to create. We also made a cookbook, which has my secret tea recipe. So that's super fun. We use data merge, which we're going to use today again, because I feel like data merge is um, something that needs to be covered again. Most people kind of struggle with it. And a lot of people are still unaware of that. So I think I want to cover data merge more. I am going to cover um, some of hyperlinks, auto sizing to text frames when you're using data merge, fitting an image to a frame, all of these features that are we're going to cover today. But before further ado, I want to show you um, my InDesign. So this is my InDesign and this is a learn tab, of course, but we're going to go ahead and create a new file. Um, and if you have any questions up until now for all, all or any of the InDesign episodes, make sure to put them in the chat. Again, uh, live both on YouTube and Behance. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. And um, I am going to take a look at chat because I see some chat coming in. Biola in the chat is saying, I just did a project with InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, and Adobe Express. So fun. Oh, that's like my workflow today. I really did all of that. But um, thanks a lot for being here, everyone. Um, I love it. Laura, hi. Welcome on in. Happy to see you here. Um, okay. So what I want to do is create, because we're in the holiday season, it's the season, right? I am going to create a holiday invite situation, which means we have holiday invites. I'm inviting people to a party. So we're going to deck the halls. Let's create something for web. We can make this and switch it later if you want to print it. But let's keep it simple for now. Make it for web because I want to demonstrate data merge instead of how to print because we've covered plenty of streams where we're printing book covers, spines. We talked about hard covers and soft covers, which is really fun. Um, also, if you've been here, I know there are a few people in chat who have been here with us all through the 10 episodes, which is really exciting. Let me know which episode is your favorite and what kind of content you want to look at more in the future because I would be, I would love to incorporate all of that. 
I love it. Okay, everyone saying hi to each other. I love it. All right, I am gonna go to inches and maybe make it like a five by seven. I'm not too sure what I really want the size to be, so we're just gonna experiment and go with it. Maybe you want like a landscape, and since my preview mode is turned on here, you can see that it's turned on. It's gonna show me everything that we have in the background that I'm changing with the properties, and that's exactly why we have it turned on. If I turn it off, um, usually I see that this is probably like a glitch in that happens in Mac. That if I have it turned on by default and I turn it off, it doesn't really turn off the background. So that's something to take care of. But why would you want to turn the preview off, right? Um, I love it. Okay. Um, I don't want facing pages and maybe I want the front and back. So I want page one and two. It's gonna be like a holiday card, but also an invitation to a party. So um, yeah, let's let's dive into it. We have this, and we don't want any bleed because this is just for web. And then I'm gonna go create. And um, yeah, we have all of these, which are my previous product, products, projects, products. <laughs> um, love it. More people joining in chat. Thanks so much for being here. Cody Boyer says, my favorite episode is the cookbook one. Hey, I love that. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, I would have been able to guess that, Cody. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to put this here um, on top of my face right here. This is a data merge panel. Okay, so let's start with a basic design. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch. Um, I am in my workspace. I have my workspace called Annika. I'm going to go in here. I can change it to the Essentials Classic, but I typically have customized everything I want in my workflow because I'm going to be using Data Merge today. I'm just going to have this right over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is open up the CC libraries. So I went to Adobe Stock. It is stock.adobe.com slash free. I went over there and got all of these um, assets right over here, pointed the finger in the wrong direction, big surprise. Um, and I have these assets right over here. So there was this really fun snowflake. We have some fun selections in here as well, like a candy cane. But what I'm going to do is essentially get these stamps and I'm going to use data merge to put a different stamp for all our invites, right? Um, I love that. We have so many new people joining in. Thank you so much for joining. Pittsburgh uh, Rich, thanks for being here. Um, I, I know I saw a new name in here as well. Michael from South Carolina. Hi, welcome on in. Um, let me know how you discovered our stream and if you've been here before. Um, thanks for being here in chat. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Okay, um, I also have some ornaments in here and I'm just like laying these assets on the screen for now. Let's see how this looks. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit just so that I can see my complete design. Um, maybe I want to bring this in here as well. Um, Fergie, hi, welcome on in. How's it going? Nice to see you here. Um, and then I want to bring this asset here. Maybe I want like something else, like a gift asset. Oh, this is this is my this was my favorite. My favorite episode was definitely the zine. I should have actually gotten it for you all. I can bring it up. Um, let's see. Where are my assets? Where are you assets? Okay. Um, okay, yeah, this is the one that I want. Um, this is super cool. This is like a gift asset we have. It's called with best wishes. I can go to my overprint view, press W on my keyboard, which is going to show me to the overprint view. We have some assets in here and this is an asset. These are all vectors that were created um, by uh, an amazing creator and I got them off of Adobe stock. They're free and this has a standard license so I can use it. I'm going to press A on my keyboard, which is the direct selection tool. And then I can essentially move this um, and remove and change the frame and how the frame is. Maybe I just want this guy and then I can probably even add an anchor point. So I'm going to go in here and add an anchor point. I've never demonstrated this before, so that's pretty cool. I can click here and um, add an anchor point here and then I can press A on my keyboard. Um, maybe I want another anchor point. So I'm going to add another anchor point in here as well. Press A on my keyboard and um, oh, that is really not. It's selecting everything. It is selecting everything. Oh my gosh. Okay, there you go. And that is essentially cropping everything out, right? Um, and Stuart in the chat is so amazing. So on point doing spoilers in here because Stuart says, me nice to show the power of cells, tables and populating them for all those typesetters out there. <laughs> well, you know what, Stuart? You're in for a surprise because we're going to create a calendar because it's the new year and who doesn't like creating calendars and planners? So we're going to use the tables, cell styles and all of the fun stuff. 
um in the new year if we have time today maybe i'll demonstrate some of that i'm gonna have one stream with calendar design using table cells and paragraph styles of course i'm gonna be using nested paragraph styles as well and then in the next stream it's gonna be linked because the first one is creating calendars the second one is creating planners because it's the new year everybody buys all of the stuff to organize their time and um their projects so why can't you make your own right it's just like about enabling yourself so yeah it's gonna be fun i know um you all really like making planners so yeah we're gonna do it you're definitely making spoilers in here <laughs> i love it okay <clears throat> sorry what's wrong in my throat love it clever in the chat says heavy breathing calendars <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a big one right i'm gonna try to cover it um in one stream okay let's add a text frame um in here i am not adding paragraph styles because this is about um data merge okay and i'm gonna say fa la 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 is that how you say it that is how you say it right okay and um i'm gonna change the font to something that i've been using lately it's the hwt archimedes pro I'm going to zoom in on that so if you guys want you can take a screenshot of this right we have this guy in here and I can change the font size in here as well let's make that 72 and now it's really big for the frame so I can resize the frame right over here um I think this might be a little too big so I'm just going to go in here and select 60 and I think that that's looking fine right I I guess that's fine um and then the next font is have um deck the halls the next text we have is deck the halls i'm just going to say that and i'm just like right now populating some information because i want to edit this out so this says join us for a celebration um i don't really have the text today so um that's fine okay that is fine we are typing everything out today it's fine. it's a process okay you guys let's say holiday celebration and we have some stuff here okay um and then we probably need to write the address and the date and where to rsvp so i'm going to probably say rsvp to anika because that's who's inviting you and then my phone number 555555555 yes <laughs> Um I love that so many friends are joining in chat Laura in the chat Sean hey Wade in the chat hello Wade Megan what's up hi hi love that everyone's here and then maybe we need something else in here as well let's see okay don't mind the black and white um right now I'm going to change all of this and maybe I want to make this to be like a script font so oh this is a fun one but I can go in here and um filter my fonts within the application so that's pretty cool Um we have calligraphic fonts in here and I really oh this is a fun one I really like the scripty and the expanded look I don't have to change the kerning of this one and it has a really fun handwritten style text itself so I don't really have to change it oh this is a fun one actually let me change the size of this to be like 48 um that's too too big maybe I'm going to change it to 36 or something yeah okay that fits perfectly hey love that Cody says Anika is inviting me. How nice! <laughs> I am. Yes, you all are invited. Oh my god, we have our holiday streams next week. You all are invited. Um, RSVP to us on social media by sharing our streams. Love it. Um, that's how we'll know that you are coming. Okay, so we have um this color palette. I created something earlier, and I didn't. I didn't actually group it. I'm going to group it right now. I'm going to select all of these and make a group out of it and then just say color palette or I can just double click this name and say colors um episode 11, okay? And um what I'm going to do is essentially select all of this and I can change the color in here. Um I do think this is really big so I can maybe size it down to like 48. Yeah, that sounds kind of better. Okay. Looks better. Sorry. Okay. and then i'm going to bring this in here and then maybe i can just like make it to 30 or something right and let's change the color to like a pink okay that's not legible at all um i feel like it's really nobody really talks about legibility a lot um and we always have to think about contrast adobe color is a great way to find if your colors are contrasting but um you can also actually sometimes use the in app applications like for instance if you're using illustrator you can just find the color um color blindness test within the app which is super super fun stupid in the chat is talking about bridge i love that um <laughs> amazing okay i'm just going to press w just to see what's um what's cooking in here okay that's a lot of rsvps we need to change that 
um okay um i don't know the hendersons i'm not hen- i'm not a henderson but like i don't know okay i don't know maybe i'm just the person i'm just the planner okay so um i have some text in here which is like this is all fictional information so any resemblance to any person living um an address living is uncanny no wait what which one is it i don't know let me know let me know if i said that right um and then we have i don't know what what else to add here let me know what else to add here i'm thinking about it maybe i should add like um a time yeah that would be a good idea um good idea <laughs> at 5 pm okay yeah or actually you know what let me actually bring up my um our stream times for monday okay so let's actually make this to be december 12th because we're doing streams on december 12th right so let's do this at 9 a.m um because we are early risers right and then um we have this guy and then i'm gonna align all of this to the right okay and this looks cool i'm gonna align it here as well and maybe i'm gonna bring it up just like so press w and see how everything looks um it's looking cool rich in the chat says i'm currently getting my certificate in indesign through bring your own laptops oh that's amazing bring your own laptop he's um a great teacher and educator um in adobe certified educator so i love that you're doing that amazing happy for you okay i feel like i need to add some more detail um maybe something like this guy i guess okay i kind of like this i'm kind of digging this but maybe if it's a different color that's possibly better right um i am going to okay i do i did i did think ahead you guys i did think ahead so let me actually go in here and um i get in here cody giving me the eyes because 9 am <laughs> maybe i should do like adobe live here wait adobe live hosts and this should be the address should be be.net and then this should be adobe live oh it's funny that this is a forward slash that's pretty cool okay okay and uh i'm just going to do this oh that's an amazing idea oh my god why didn't i think of this earlier but we have this okay because you want to join us for a holiday celebration so if you're interested you can join us on our next stream which is amazing we have a holiday streams next week which i'm really excited for okay and this looks pretty cool i think i want to add some more stuff but we're going to um hold our thought here because let's talk about data merge okay so i'm going to zoom out and we have the second um page right here let me open the pages panel and show you how it looks we have the horizontal panel aligns um so all the pages in the document are aligned horizontally you can change that to vertically but i prefer it horizontal so i change that if you want to change it you can go to the hamburger menu and go to view pages and click on vertically and that's going to change how that panel um looks and i'm going to change that back really quickly to horizontally and that's how it looks really handy when you're doing like book spreads or book designs okay and then we have um again what i wanted to show you was allowing document pages to shuffle we used this last time but i'm going to show you just in case when we created the book cover design this is nice little recap into it so if you're creating a book cover you need the front cover the spine the back cover and even extra space for the margins if you're using a hard cover design so let's actually uncheck allow document pages to shuffle and that's going to help me add this page right next to page 1 which can be really handy when you want to see your designs next to each other so i want to see the front and back of the design next to each other and this is a sun, such a fun and easy way to do it okay i'm going to add these little um icons right here as well maybe something like this press w and this is definitely outside the margins i'm going to bring that in and then i want to bring it in here i do want to add some information about where um all of the stamps are going to go so i went ahead and got some of these stamps off adobe stamp oh wait this is not the stamp hold on oh oh my god those colors are changed but these stamps looks like look like these so these are like super cool if i press command 0 to zoom in that's a really fun way to zoom in you can press command 0 and command 1 to zoom out command 0 to zoom in again um really fun easy shortcut and um you can use it okay so these are some of the stamps and then there's this one that i got off adobe stock again and then these ones um really cool to like streamline your workflow because you don't have time to make all of these illustrations you can just use all of these and read about licenses and that is going to help me today 
So I'm going to press W again and create a frame right over here. I'm going to create a rectangular frame. So I have the frame. Um, again, talking about accessibility, we are 20 minutes in. I'm going to use the zoom tools on my screen to show you something really specific. So if I'm talking about the frame tool, I'm going to talk about the frame tool right over here. And then we have the CC libraries again, and we have all the keyboard shortcuts on the screen. Okay. So we have something which is the text, the posted stamp frame that we have here. Uh, maybe I should add something like an artwork here like this. Okay, pretty cool. I really love this. And then we can add some text boxes in here as well. So maybe I want like a similar text box here. And this maybe says a recipient or sent with love, right? And then you want to add the address of wherever, like whoever is doing this. Um, but what I want to do is I want to create a paragraph style. This is a great insight into creating paragraph styles as well. First of all, don't base your paragraph styles on the basic paragraph style, which is different for every, every person on the universe, planet, galaxy, everywhere. So I'm going to click the plus button and say, um, maybe I'll just say subtitle for now. Okay. And then I'm going to go in and click the pencil icon right over here and I'm, I can change all the properties. So maybe I'm going to go in here and change it to HWT Archimedes Pro. And I can also see previews when I have that selected. Um, it did change it. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to leave it at 12 and then I can change the character colors in here as well. Because I do have all of these colors in here with the text that I used previously. These were automatically saved in InDesign and that's pretty cool because I can just go in here and select it now. So maybe I want it to be the darker pink and then I'm going to click OK and press escape. Now this looks like it might need some uh, need uh, some room but I am going to go ahead and change the color in here again I don't think that's very legible so I'm just going to make it very green um wait very not green wait what is this color blue um I know there are questions in chat I just I'm just going to address really really quickly okay let me go back to my call to action so um we were talking about sharing your work with us and it can be anything as long as it's set in InDesign yes Stuart, thank you so much for asking. It can be anything that you were inspired to create or you were using the same techniques that you saw here. Maybe you made like a zine, um, used page imposition or anything like that. You can share that with us on these hashtags and on Instagram or anywhere else you like. Just don't forget to tag us. So if it's anything that you learned over here or something that accelerated your workflow, I would love to see it and we would love to share it over here on stream. Um, and even see um, if you're interested in seeing more content. Um, thank you so much for doing so. And thank you for asking. Okay, let's jump back in. Jump back in. So we do have this over here, right? Um, I'm going to do one thing, which I'm going to apply the same style to this guy. So I'm just going to click inside and then I'm going to go to the paragraph style and select subtitle. I don't need to select all of my text. I can just click inside the text frame, right? So I have this guy and then this can just be um, address. Okay, this is where the address, address is going to come in. Now, I do want some information here as well, which is going to be address, which is going to come in from our um, comma separated values. So this is where the magic happens. This is where data merge comes into picture. I do have some of these um, already set up. These are all fake addresses. And I got all of these on the internet. And these are all the images. If I want to insert any images, it's going to have to have this um, header, which has at the rate symbol before the name of the header, which really helps InDesign identify that it is an image style. So what I'm going to do is essentially what I'm doing here is creating a layout, which is going to fetch in these images from the comma separated values, which I'm going to insert in this data merge panel right over here. Um, so this is the frame which is going to have our posted stamps that we just showed earlier. And then this is the text frame which is going to have our text. Before we insert the text, because we saw here that these addresses are not all the same length, it can be um, so cool to see that how the text, text frame changes dynamically. And you can do that by using the text frame options pressing command B on your keyboard, it's going to give you the text frame options right over here. 
and you can either create a paragraph style doing the same thing for now i'm just going to go ahead and use the auto size option right over here this is super cool because this dynamically changes the frame size right so i can go in here and it says auto sizing off i can say height and width key proportions and i want to scale it from the top left as the reference point so this is going to be my reference point and it's going to change the sizing from here and expand it as and when required so i'm going to use that and then i can also set the minimum height in here i don't want to use all of this constraints for now and you can also change the column rules and column numbers and we don't need that for now right so we have this guy i'm going to click okay and that's it now what we want to do is add a data source so we have posted stamps in here and we have all of these images um, i'm going to show you what images we have in one second so these are all the images we have and these are all the posted stamps we're going to use right so this is what we want to insert into our document and then we have this document at the end which is the comma separated values that i just downloaded off my google sheets so how i downloaded that was i went here this is a normal column this is these are just normal columns and rows no formatting nothing required i just gave this the name address and you can call it anything you can call it item 1 item 2 but remember to put the add rate symbol here right and then i can go to the file button and download it and say comma separated values and this is going to download my comma separated values right over here so i have done that already and i can just add that as a source in here what it means by adding a source to your data merge file or a data source is essentially fetching information from a database and then populating that in indesign so it reads the information from the sheet file the comma separated values that you added so it it's going to read the first column which has addresses the second one which has images and then it's going to populate it but you need to link those two for that right so that's what we're going to do now we're going to link the address and the stamp field right over here so this is my data merge panel if you can't see it go to window utilities and open data merge this is how you open the data merge panel this right over here gives you a lot of information because this in itself tells you how to use the data merge so it says choose select data source from the panel menu um it says select data source okay let's select our data source and then it's going to give you this option where you can browse through all of this and um then select this file which has the data um comma separated values i'm going to click on open right and now it's giving me two fields before we move forward i have this question in chat which is very fun thanks laura for asking laura asks what all what all adobe programs do data merge okay so illustrator also does variables illustrator and photoshop i believe also has variables and even in design so if you're creating something in illustrator which is like name tags or something very simple or like advertisements or flyers you can use um that in illustrator as well jack in the chat says you can use a plugin in xd as well oh that's pretty cool i love that okay so we have this and now we want to link it okay so we have the addresses and stamps but we don't know where to put it in indesign now here comes the magic and here comes all of the good stuff i can select this guy and this is my image frame and i can select the stamp and that says stamp right here this means that it is actually going to insert the stamp in here i can click the preview button and see that the stamps right over here but we still don't have the address so how do i fix that i can select the address field the address text frame and then we have address right over here it does app append it so i can just delete this guy um right over here and it changed it dynamically i can now circle it through all my options in the comma separated value file um and click on previewing the next one we have a uh, right and you can see dynamically that it's changing everything to showcase everything really clearly i'm just going to go to overprint mode and press command 0 close my libraries in here so you can see everything really quickly i can put this right here and i see that it's getting cut off so this is my um back of the invite right or the envelope design whatever you may call it and this is where this is the address of the people that i'm sending the invite to right so maybe uh, someone in the chat lives on crescent street um and i want to add this air mail um postage stamp to them and these are very custom these are a fun easy way to customize your designs as well so you can also do this for your holiday invites which i really really love and as you can see it is dynamically changing this and it's not giving me any hyphenations there is no such thing of actually going in and changing the text frames because indesign is doing that for you 
all right but this is just one file how do i make a print out how do i make a version a pdf version that i send for print where i can um download all of this and print all of this so if you go to this handy dandy little hamburger menu you can create a merge document you can go in here and go to creating merge document and if i click on here it's going to show you this menu which is kind of confusing sometimes but it's really really easy you have records to merge you can choose all single or range and then you can choose that these are the kind of records we want um on all my pages and we have multiple record layout and options i'm not going to get into that because i want to get into more stuff um today let's actually go ahead and click on create it says create merge document and that's exactly what it's going to do so all of the options that i had in here so this is the comma separated value sheet file that we had this was the sheet and this is the document and now it's just going to create all of this i'm going to click on okay and wait for it okay no overset text was generated that's great because we don't want any errors okay and then it's just going to generate this file which has all of these different addresses which is pretty pretty cool because i do not think that i could see these addresses all at once so the first page remains the same and the like second page is different so right over here this is a different file i'm going to press command 0 again um actually in here and then we have this guy we have another address alpaca way we have franklin avenue broad street doyle line crescent street and now you can send it to print you can send it to um your printer you can send it to any of your business clients anything you want all of the usage is perfect all right that finishes data merge for us but i really want to showcase a lot more features that we covered in our previous streams i'm going to quickly run through um before we move on if you have any questions regarding this let me know in the chat i love that stuart um is so active in chat stuart says variables are also worth getting them in your skills set and skill set in photoshop and illustrator absolutely yeah um i saw someone the other day doing something by hand and i told them that this was possible in illustrator and they were so surprised they were like wow is really and i was like yes um so yeah it's really powerful okay This was the um book cover design that we created. Um Stuart actually gave the suggestion who's also in chat today that we should put too much luggage and pack less because it's written by pack less. <laughs> um we created this design in here. I'm going to press W as overprint view. Um and I'm going to see what we have. Okay. We had some of the styles in here. We used this illustration and created a gradient background. some um logo designs in illustrator as well which is fun to create and we talked about isbn numbers quick recap of that as well stuart says data merge is great for business cards yeah that's actually what we use data merge for um during our actual data merge stream okay and then we also created this fun little restaurant menu design which is really cool um you can use various colors from your branding and then use that for your um restaurant menu design we created some of the assets and edited that out so these are untouched i still haven't made any changes from what you saw when i created them live um i am going to delete this guy as well also i just realized that i haven't saved my files so i'm going to go ahead and save before i <laughs> crash in design today okay um let's really quickly save um data merge example okay Cool. So now the file is saved. I can press W again to get out of overprint view, and then we have the manual. I'm gonna open the zine really quickly and show you how the saddle stitch and page imposition works. So let's talk about page imposition. Page in, page imposition basically means that you don't have to think about how your pages are laid in InDesign because InDesign does it for you. Um, if you don't have the latest version of InDesign, and if your firm or company or management uses the older version, you might have to use the manual way of setting pages. If it's divisible by four, the total number of pages, you can really totally use this um, technique where you lay your pages and spreads as sixteen one. It's a zigzag pattern. So what you can do is I'm really zoomed in. Wait, am I zoomed in? I'm zoomed in. Hold on. So what you can do is lay it like a zigzag pattern. So it goes from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then go back up. Where eight and nine are the facing pages that are actually in the center of the page, and then go back up to nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So this is super cool because this is kind of like a manual technique where I don't have to lay everything. Um, because I don't use the same software, or if you're creating it in a different software, this technique will still be handy for you. 
Okay, let's go to the zine that we created. Now, these were my illustrations that I created during Inktober last year. Um, and I decided to make like a fun zine out of it. It doesn't have to mean anything. It can be distributed for anyone you want. You can use these for various things. You can use these to promote your events. You can use these to promote your work. You can use these just for fun, to share a story, a comic book, anything you want. If you make really cool graphic styles as well, I know Kara Sykes, who was making illustrations earlier. This would be a really cool way to showcase that as well. I really love that you can use all of this. This had a lot of text frames and we used shapes in a very fun way to add that design element in here as well. I love it. Um, Cody Bear in the chat says, so cool. Hey, thanks, Cody. Appreciate it. And then um, we did this as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on print booklet to show you how this is automated, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on print booklet right over here. And this is going to help me show you how it is automated in InDesign. We talked about how it's done manually. Um, and then that's typically what your printers do, right? They lay their pages in that way, or you can just like do those. Um, but this is essentially the same thing. So I can go in here to my setup and this says what the booklet type is. What we were doing was a two up saddle stitch. You can also do all of these, which can be used for brochure designs. Um, we have the print preset as well. You can use, um, print settings in here where you can set your marks and bleeds. So maybe I want the crop marks. I don't want registrations on all of this information. I can click OK and then I can go to my preview mode because I selected the two up saddle stitch. It's going to show me the same way. This is 16 1 and then I scroll through this guy. It says 2 15 14 3. Okay. I'm going to go back 16 1 2 15 and 14 3. It's exactly the same. So no matter how you set it up, page and position in InDesign does the work for you and you don't have to do it manually. So I think this is one of my favorite episodes as well because like it is so handy and so easy for you to create something like this um, and you don't really have to. It's just like out of mind, out of sight, right? You don't have to think about it. You don't have to care about it. It's going to do it for you. InDesign is just so powerful and brilliant. I love it. Okay, that's about page imposition. That was a nice, nice little recap for our zines, okay? I'm gonna shut this down. I'm actually gonna don't save it, not save it. I'm gonna leave that up. And then we're gonna go to business cards. Now, this was the data merge file that we had and we have this business card Adobe Live um, data source in here and I can browse through this. We had Ryan Selby, Jack Watson, we have Cody Bear, Wade Aker, we have all of our friends and their links in chat. Um, in, on the stream at least, and we have um, all of these fun creators in here. And then I also use QR codes. Now, I don't know about you, but you can actually use QR codes in here, which is pretty cool. The only difference using QR codes would be you using the pound symbol. So I'm just gonna say hashtag QR code, and then you can write in whatever QR code you wanna generate. So if it's the Adobe Live Instagram QR code, I can just write this. And if I enter this file into InDesign, um, and then make like a frame for the QR code, it's going to generate that for you. Why don't I do that really quickly? Um, I think that it would be much easier for you to understand if I demonstrate that super quick. Okay, I'm going to X this out, um, paste it here, and then I'm going to paste in my Instagram as well over here, and then maybe my Behance. Okay, let's get this file. Um, so we have three, three links over here, and InDesign is automatically going to generate QR codes. Let's um, go ahead and uh, go in here. Uh, Jack in the chat says, let's grab a donut. That was really apt. apt. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, the, the alignment is a little bit uh, questionable, but it's fine. We, we care about the text, right? Okay, and then we have the QR codes right in here. I'm going to go ahead and download a comma separated value of this guy. And then I can go ahead and make a new file. I can go ahead, make new file, um, say custom. I don't really care about anything else right now. And I can just go ahead and make this frame. This can act as an image frame right here. And I can go ahead and bring my uh, custom file that I just created in here. Okay, so this was the file that I just created and this just has QR codes, right? These are links. I really did not put anything. So the similar way I can go in here and add the same data source and I can go in here, add the second sheet, which has QR codes. 
and then I can just like link this stream to this guy and voila we have QR codes for Instagram for Adobe Live this is for me and this is my Behance so if you want to check anything out um, make sure to scan these with your phone if you're watching this on replay that's a nice way you can tag Adobe Live for our um, work you can tag me and reach out to me if you have any questions and you can watch the replays here so pretty handy hey um, that's how you can add QR codes and InDesign automatically does the QR code generation. Let me know if you already knew that InDesign could generate QR codes, but that's pretty cool. We have, um, again, these links that you can go ahead and scan from your phone. All right, um, let's close this and click on don't save and we have covered data merge again. I'm gonna close the business cards and click on don't save because we don't wanna make any changes to this. And now comes the cookbook, which is Cody's favorite. I really, really love that. Um, we created this cookbook. It's called Made in India because this had, this was supposed to have all the traditional recipes. Trust me, I am going to release this. I'm asking all my friends to send me recipes. Um, so I don't know if they're comfortable sharing the secret family recipes, but we'll see. Okay, we'll see. It's a work in progress. Um, and then we have this guy. We laid it up like um, having fresh morning. So like a segregation for whatever you want to eat in the morning. So this is like ghar ki chai, which is an Indian spice tea. I'm going to press W on the keyboard and uh, give you a little zoom in right over here so that you can take a screenshot if you want. I really don't mind it. Um, it's pretty brilliant, to be honest. I'm just going to zoom in right over here so you can take a screenshot. Hey, so this was really fun to create because we created parent pages for this. And I'm going to show you how that looks really quickly. The parent page, um, the C parent was essentially this guy. Um, and we edited out all of these and overridden, overrode, overrode. Is that a word? we overrided the elements um, from the parent page. So what we did was we applied this. Let's say we're doing that to page 12, right? So this is our page 12 and this is how it looks. Right now, none of this is editable. And you can see if I zoom in really, really a lot, <laughs> this is a dotted line. But if I press shift command and click on it, it changes it and now you can override all of these elements, right? So we have this guy right here and now I, because I press shift command and clicked on the text frame, you can change any of these instances. So I press this guy and maybe my next recipe is um, upma. I don't know yet. Um, and this is also a very, very typical Indian uh, morning meal. So that's typically what a lot of people enjoy back home. So this is what you can um, create. Okay, um, Stuart in the chat says, what font is your title on the pages? The font I'm using is a dashil fine black. That's what I'm using. I just like really zoomed in um, the font name if you want to take a screenshot. Again, um, thanks for asking. I really appreciate all your questions. Okay, um, and then that's the font we're using. And that way you can also override all of these elements. Okay, super cool. I'm just taking a look at my list. I have a really long list. Um, this is the list that I have. Um, I don't know if I'm going to cover it. <laughs> There's a lot to cover. Trust me, 10 episodes were a lot. Okay. We also talked about pre-flight panels. So I'm going to go in here and see what errors I have. So this is my pre-flight panel, which shows me what kind of errors are, there are existing, right? So these two errors basically say that these are missing links. It's really important and really comes in handy. You can make rules for pre-flight panels as well. That's actually one of the streams in the future in 2023, where I will be talking about very specific things that you can do with the pre-flight panel, right? Right now, it gives me this error where it says that, hey, this is a missing file and a missing link. I don't know where this exists now. So if you expo Sorry, if you export it or send it to someone, it may not. And if you click on it, if you double click on it, it's going to show you exactly the location where the file is missing. So this question mark symbol right over here, it's going to show you that this was a missing link. It can also show you the same thing if you have a text box and text box and there is overset text, right? So let me actually make this a little bit tinier. And now it has like a plus icon right over here, which shows me that there is extra text, but the text frame is um, smaller. And right over here, it actually increased um, one one more of the options and this is essentially where um, the extra pre-flight panel was. I also just realized that I'm on the other side of the screen all this while and I had no idea. I thought I was blocking your um, view all this while but I'm like in sub subconsciously I'm showing you every everything on my uh, screen. <laughs> Love it. So if I have this guy here, it's going to redirect me to the text frame that I have. So if I double click on this, it's going to show me this. And 
um, look at this panel really carefully while I edit the text frame, okay? So if I make it bigger, it's just gonna delete this and now it disappeared because we've resolved that error, right? So that's the pre-flight panel for you. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay, um, really looking into what we have. All right, um, we also wanna talk about how you can embed a file into Behance and add collaborators because I feel like while we really do all of this, we also wanna talk about how you can make and present this to your portfolio. So what we're gonna do is use the share button and quickly export it or publish online. Let's do the publish online so I can embed this readable file within a Behance project, right? So this opens up, I can just say test file embed. Um, I know a lot of you weren't aware of this when I first showcased this, so I'm, I hope this rings some bells. We can go to advanced options and change all of these as well. We can change the resolution. Um, let's just use a low one because we're streaming. Um, you can change the JPEG image quality and you can add video embeds and GIFs as well if you view it on a web page. And then I'm gonna hit publish and this is gonna publish it online and um, this is what it says, it says missing. Okay, do you wish to continue publishing? Yes, let's continue publishing. I don't really um, wanna go in there because I don't remember where the files are. And then I'm gonna publish these files and then it's gonna generate a link for me. So I can either click on view document or click on copy, right? So if I click on copy and go to my browser, I can go in here and select paste and this is gonna show me the file that was just created. I can go in here and I can toggle the thumbnails. So these are all the pages for my file and this is what we created, right? So what if you want to actually embed it somewhere? And how I can do that is go to behance.net and create a new page or you can even do it on your website, right? You can just put in an embed code. So I'm gonna click on share your work and click on project. And if I have Behance right over here, I can go to these options and it says embed right over here. And um, this is embed and this is gonna help you um, show show the same page flip effect in um, because we have an iframe code right here. So you can use this and click on the copy to clipboard button and go in here, we have the embed handy dandy little button in the Behance uh, project space as well. So you click on that and paste it. And if you click on embed, you can wait for the magic to happen. It says read now. I can click on view a preview and I can click read now and that's gonna show me a full page view of all of these, right? Super cool, I really love this. And you can view it on a smaller screen as well. So that's pretty cool. It's not showing you as a spread because I did not export it out as a spread and it was not saved as facing pages. But if I do that, that's gonna help you do it as well. Now, the next thing on the agenda is showing you how you can collaborate with people on Behance because I feel like these are the things that are not ever showcased and I really want you to share and improve your portfolio because that's what this stream is all about. You can use any of the 11 episodes that we've covered so far to improve your portfolio and make something of your own and if you do you'd like to share it with the world right you want to get hired for the work you create so if you do like to create all of those things you can go in here to be hands and embed these files now with the settings button you can actually go in here and populate all of these as well but Right over here, there's this little icon that says, um, this link that says add co-owners, credits, and more. So I can actually, um, if I wanna showcase and credit someone for the help they help, for the help they did to me on the work, I can go in here and add in the discovery panel their name. So if I say that um, Anika helped me in all of this work, I can go in here and tag myself, right? This is just gonna give them um, credit on your project. It's not gonna make them a collaborator. But if you wanted uh, the same project to showcase, be showcased on multiple people's profile. So say if Stuart and I worked on the same project, I can add Stuart's name in here and it's gonna populate in here as well. So Stuart um, helped me and it says pending because it's gonna send a notification to Stuart that hey, you guys worked on this together and then it's gonna show up on both of your profiles. So that's a pretty cool trick. Um, I don't know if you all know about this. Okay, and then you have to um, add particular tags in here as well. So you can say Adobe InDesign 
and you can say adobe live for instance and maybe you can say anika if i'm creating that project um picking the right tools is also super important because i feel like um that's really handy and comes in because a most frequently asked question is how do you get featured on behance um having all of this information correctly populated is the best way and increases your chances i won't say that it will help you get featured but increases your chances to get featured or even be considered it's like you're matching not even matching the criteria if you're not populating everything well right so i'm going to hit cancel and i'm going to um show you how this is done all right how much time do we have left we have about um 7 minutes left in the stream so let's actually go back into indesign i'm going to leave this page and come back in here okay if you have any questions so far let me know in the chat i feel like i am going super slow covering things easier today um just to show you best practices and what you can do and what all we covered stuart in the chat has a question for me stuart says what was your favorite that unlocked in design for you i feel like just having like brand style guides really really handy and like such a cool way to actually have those um i love it um so which brings me into the brand style guide that we created we created this brave cat coffee this is actually an adobe express um name that i got from adobe express and then i edited it out i got the shape i added my own take on it i made these lockups in illustrator and then i went in and created this brand style guide during the live stream which was our last stream so we talked about how you can use shapes to inculcate and use like brand language um and like make it the same and cohesive across your brand so we created this on our last stream we learned how to create table of contents which was super cool to see i loved how chat was so hyped about it and um we have these brand values and tone of voice as well we created logos in here and um had additional layouts i love that this came out really cool i still have an i have to work on it i think i'll upload this one to my um behance because this is a really fun one i really like the design so maybe i'll come up with like mock ups and um with this page with the mock ups page i'll actually go ahead and create mock ups post that to my behance with the brand identity as well love it clever in the chat says oh i've been featured on fresco a bit that's pretty cool clever yeah fresco is a great tool adobe fresco if you've never used um has a free version as well so you can go ahead and download that if you really like illustration on the ipad i feel like fresco is super handy comes in super handy okay this was the brand style guide i have the saddle stitch up in here i'm going to close that and we just did that today the cookbook design we already talked about all right okay let's close this as well um brand style guide i'm going to close the data merge in here as well okay i'm going to go in here and find um what we're looking for so i'm going to go in here so you some so show you some last tips and tricks so i'm going to go to web and um go in here maybe i want like a 1920 okay so i want a custom size let, let's say it's 1920 by 1080 um because i just want like a larger space to create stuff and we have this guy right here okay kuri bear says fresco is great hey yeah i love fresco i used to draw all the time in fresco um i just haven't been doing that lately but i love that you can do that okay so now i'm going to just create text frames in here um and then i can just like create multiple frames now this would be super handy for the calendar that we're going to create in our next stream but i can show you one technique that we have and then i'm probably going to open like um sheets again so we have sheets right here maybe i want to create a new sheet right um it just says monday and tuesday wednesday i don't know sorry i actually wanted months so january i don't know how you spell this but i'm sorry if i'm spelling this wrong time for be march april may okay and all of these i don't know if it's going to copy all of this as one information but i can actually create threaded text so if i paste this in here oh it's not copying it i really need this in like um a story editor or something let's see if i can do this here january february let's see march okay yeah it's doing it now okay so what i wanted to do was create um threaded text and now you can see it's overset um i can close the story editor mode in here and then i'm going to zoom in i actually want to change the size of this so that it only fits the one month so i'm going to change it to 30 points and yeah there you go and now you can see this uh plus icon right here which means that we have extra information 
So I can just bring it here and then I can bring this here. And this is just creating the threaded text in here with all these frames already set up. So I have all of these and then I can go in here, press command Y. And you can see that this is just one text frame, which is threaded into multiple text frames, right? One text, which is threaded into multiple text frames. I feel like this is super cool and this can come in handy when you're creating books and uh, stuff like that, which is long form content. So long designs and long form um, documents are really cool when it comes to threaded texts. Love it. Um, okay, let's see. Clever says, oh, there's an InDesign spot. None of my forms are on Behance though. No one wants to see forms. Oh, Clever. Yeah, you, yeah, I get it. Um, it's hard to get featured in the InDesign um, page. I don't know. I've never been featured in the InDesign page. So I will not be the right person to ask. But yeah, that's a fun way to create the threaded text. Okay. I feel like um, there might be some options that I can actually showcase. Um, I know that a lot of people in the chat use social media. So I wanted to show you that if you do not have any web application, if you just wanted to be in design, you're an InDesign lover like Biola in the chat. I don't know if Biola is actually in chat, but if you are an InDesign lover and you really just want to stay in InDesign, don't want to get out of it and you want to create carousel posts in InDesign, you can actually do that in InDesign. So I can do the same thing. I can add pages in here. I'm going to select all of these pages. I can actually change the page size as well. I can go ahead and call these IG posts. So I'm going to go in here and call IG posts um, and this guy as well. This is a custom post size that I created. And then as you can see, these are all next to each other, but I want to create a carousel, right? What's a great tip doing so? Um, also, we are uh, just running about time. So I'm just going to do this really quickly. You can do allow pages to shuffle and you can paste this next to each other. And this is how you can create carousel posts in within InDesign. Thank you so much for watching you all. I love that you all were here with me today. I will be back next week for our holiday streams, which are super exciting. We have Cody and Wade coming up before me on Monday, 12th of December, 2022. And then we will be back with another brand new episode of Let's InDesign in January. Thanks so much for being here. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below the video if you're watching this on replay. Thanks live chat for being here and always giving me useful feedback. But um, don't forget to share your work with us over here in all of these descriptions. We have tags and we have hashtags. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you being here and I will see you next week hopefully for our holiday streams. Thanks a lot. Have a great day you guys. Bye for now.